Hello friends, in this video we will be synthesizing 2-chlorobenzoic acid or orthochlorobenzoic acid from anthranilic acid by the Sandmeyer reaction. For this experiment you will need 5 grams of anthranilic acid, 40 milliliters of 37% hydrochloric acid, 9.5 grams of copper 2-sulfate pentahydrate, 8.5 grams of sodium chloride, 2.5 grams of sodium nitrite and 5 grams of copper metal turning. In the first part, we will prepare cuprous chloride or copper 1 chloride. Start by taking a 250 ml Erlenmeyer flask and place it on a hot plate stirrer with a stirring bar inside. With the help of a funnel, 9.5 grams of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate was added to the flask. Then 8.5 grams of sodium chloride was added on top of that. 20 ml of distilled water was added and then stirred to dissolve. It was then heated until it's boiling hot. The solution immediately turns green due to the formation of cupric chloride or copper 2 chloride. When the solution starts boiling, 30 ml of concentrated 37% hydrochloric acid was added in a single portion. And then 5 grams of copper metal turning was added to the flask. You will immediately notice the color turning dark to almost black. The solution is then boiled until the solution turns clear and transparent. In the next part, or part B, we will be diacetizing anthranilic acid. For that, we take 5 grams of anthranilic acid in a 250 ml beaker and then add 7.5 ml of 37% hydrochloric acid to it. And then 35 ml of distilled water was added. The solids were thoroughly mixed in order to dissolve it to get the clear solution. Then keep it in a nice bath or a refrigerator to cool down to below 5 degrees Celsius. Now take another small Erlenmeyer flask and add 2.5 grams of sodium nitrite. Remember that it is sodium nitrite and not sodium nitrate. Now add 9 ml of distilled water to dissolve the compound. Then place that in an ice bath to bring the temperature to below 5 degrees Celsius. When both the anthranilic acid and the sodium nitrite solution is cooled down to below 5 degrees Celsius, the sodium nitrite solution was then slowly added to the anthranilic acid solution with continuous stirring. A thermometer was placed in the beaker containing anthranilic acid mixture to record the temperature. The temperature is maintained below 5 degrees Celsius. The reaction occurring here is the diacetization of anthranilic acid. By that time, the cuprous chloride or the copper 1 chloride mixture which was kept in boiling turned almost clear and was taken out from the hot plate. I have not recorded this but this solution in the Erlenmeyer flask was added to around 400 ml of ice called distilled water. This will crash out the white cuprous chloride. It was then washed multiple times with cold distilled water to remove much of the acid. The freshly prepared cuprous chloride was then dissolved in 10 ml of 37% hydrochloric acid. On adding the hydrochloric acid and shaking it well, the Cuprous chloride easily dissolves in it, giving a dark, clear solution. Now this cuprous chloride solution was added to the diacetized anthranilic acid with constant watch on the temperature. Temperature should stay below 5 degrees Celsius. You can see brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide is formed in this step. Hence, it is advised that you do this reaction outside or in a fume hood. There will be too much form produced in the reaction. If it forms up too much, you can use a glass rod to mechanically stir and break those bubbles. Once cuprous chloride solution is added completely, the mixture was kept stirring for another 20 minutes in the ice bath. Then the crystals formed is filtered. I use the vacuum filtration. You can clearly see the cream white color of the crude 2 chlorobenzoic acid in the funnel. You will be also noticing that nasty orange colored stain on the glass filter. It is the stain from my previous video on cesium pentiodobismuthate. 
The crude product was then recrystallized from hot boiling water. On cooling, the crystals of orthochlorobenzoic acid was formed. It was then filtered. I used a simple gravity filtration method and then dried. The melting point of the compound was determined and was found very close to the theoretical melting point of 2-chlorobenzoic acid that is approximately 148 degrees Celsius. So that's all in this video. These are my Patreon supporters who are financially supporting me so that I am able to purchase new chemicals and equipments required for my videos. You can also support me via Patreon or PayPal. The links of both of them are in the description. There is another new feature in my channel where you can pay directly through YouTube via the Super Thanks tab. You can find the Super Thanks icon just below the video. Click on that and you can pay directly to my account. Hope you have enjoyed my video. If you loved the contents of this video, do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button for notifications.